If you want to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page to gain access to exclusive videos, take part in Q&As, and watch my retrospectives before they go live on YouTube. Just recently, a new live-action movie based on the popular video game Mortal Kombat hit cinemas and streaming services. The Mortal Kombat games were very popular in the mid-90s, becoming strong competition to the likes of Street Fighter II in the Western market. But the jump to 3D, it lost its momentum, but gained a new lease of life back in 2011. With a soft reboot of the series and the recent games Mortal Kombat 10 and 11 have continued to bring new fans to the franchise. With Warner Brothers owning the studio that produced these games, a movie was bound to come along. The first Mortal Kombat film was a success on the big screen in the mid-90s, and the film is still to this day a strong contender to being one of the best movies based on a video game. Its simple Enter the Dragon style storyline set in a fantasy world just seemed to translate well to a live-action movie, more so than the likes of Super Mario Bros., Street Fighter and Double Dragon. Mortal Kombat has even found success on the small screen with a TV and web series. Outside of the terrible sequel from 1997, the Mortal Kombat franchise has managed to make that leap from video game to film pretty successfully. This new feature took a long time to actually get made, with talks of a movie happening in 2011 but things came to a standstill in 2013. Come the summer of 2015, producer James Wan signed on with Simon McCoy, who was an experienced commercials director with Mortal Kombat being his first feature film, also with Greg Russo writing the script. In May 2019, it was announced that the film had entered pre-production and would be shot in South Australia. Come early this year, the director revealed the film would have all the violence of the video game and they came quite close to the line of getting an NC-17 rating by the Motion Picture Association. With the 90s movie being criticised by the fans for its lack of blood and the use of the infamous fatalities, this new version will carry over all the violence of the video game to appease the fans of the franchise. Since its release in late April, the fans have given it positive reviews, but film critics have been less kind, with many stating it was a bit lacklustre. It also felt unoriginal, but the character of Kano was the film's saving grace, with many praising Josh Lawson's performance and comedy timing. The critics did point out the fans will enjoy it, but everyone else may feel it to be somewhat forgettable, and for those who are unfamiliar with Mortal Kombat and its universe, may feel a bit lost throughout. For the film's story, the realm of Outworld has defeated Earthrealm in 9 of 10 deathmatch tournaments called Mortal Kombat. If Outworld win the next tournament, they can conquer Earth. However, an ancient prophecy is uncovered, stating that the blood of Hanzo will unite a new generation of Earthrealm's champions to prevent Outworld's victory. Hanzo was killed by a rival ninja clan in the 17th century, but luckily Hanzo's child was taken to safety by the god of thunder, Raiden, the protector of Earth. The sorcerer Shang Tsung is aware of this prophecy and enlists a group of warriors to kill Earthrealm's champions, identified by a distinctive dragon mark, before the next tournament begins. Cole Young, a former MMA champion, and his family are attacked by Sub-Zero. He is rescued in time by Jax, and he instructs Cole to find his partner Sonya Blade, while he stays behind to fight off Sub-Zero, losing his arms in the process. Cole tracks Sonya to her hideout, where she is interrogating Kano. She reveals that she and Jax have been investigating Mortal Kombat's existence, and that the Dragon Mark can be transferred to anyone who kills the original bearer. The hideout is soon attacked by Shang Tsung's assassin reptile, but a reluctant Kano kills him with the help of Cole and Sonya. Kano believes he knows the whereabouts of Raiden's temple and agrees to take them there, but they get lost along the way, but bump into Liu Kang, who takes them to the exact location. The newcomers are introduced to Raiden, who doesn't seem to be impressed by them, feeling they lack the skills necessary to take part in Mortal Kombat. They are joined by Jax, who Raiden rescued earlier and fitted him with a set of mechanical arms. Shang Tsung enters the Earth Realm and breaks the rules by attacking the temple alongside Sub-Zero and Melina. Kung Lao appears in time to help and Raiden creates a giant shield to protect them. The new group of warriors begin to train to unlock their arcana, a special power unique to all Dragon Mark bearers to unleash their full potential to prepare themselves for Mortal Kombat. 
Movies based on video games have always been inconsistent in quality. They never really live up to expectations. Most are just cheap and forgettable, and often made by filmmakers who have no experience with the game, and we end up with a product that has little connection to the source material. In the case of Mortal Kombat from 1995, they managed to successfully translate the game into a film. Despite not having the blood and gore that made the video game unique at the time, the filmmakers captured the spirit of what made it so popular in the arcades. I loved the 90s movie as a teenager, and it's still fun to watch to this day despite it being less than perfect. With this reboot of the movie franchise, I wasn't expecting much, but I was intrigued by the look of it, and the early reviews seemed pretty positive. After getting a chance to watch it, I found it to be very entertaining, but it does come with a number of problems and strange creative choices in its script. With its moderate budget, they have managed to keep the violence intact to secure an R rating. At $50 million, it reduces much of the risk for a return on the film studio's investment. If it was, say, a $100 million movie, the violence would have certainly taken a step back. The fight scenes are, for the most part, very well choreographed, especially with the fights involving Sub-Zero, and they make a lot of efforts to include the special moves from the game and even the fatalities that come with some of the characters. So for hardcore fans of Mortal Kombat, they will certainly love seeing their favourite characters in action. The story is obviously set before the events of the Mortal Kombat tournament, so it serves as a prequel for these combatants to discover their powers and prepare for this battle to save the Earth Realm. The writers do treat the source material seriously, perhaps a little too much in areas, and with the added humour, it does become a little uneven with its tone. But thankfully, it is made by people who clearly love the video game, and it doesn't feel like a slapdash cash-in. The new character Cole, who is a descendant of Scorpion, is very bland, however, a typical generic lead who is the hero of the story. In the traditional story of Mortal Kombat, Liu Kang is the hero, who I imagine will take the lead come the sequel if it's made. Cole just doesn't really strike much of an impression outside of just being a good fighter. I don't think it's a fault of the actor, but just the dialogue he is given. The other cast of warriors are pretty good at representing their video game counterparts. I think they cast well. Ludi Lin as Liu Kang is spot on and has that Bruce Lee physique. The most memorable character in the film is Kano. He provides all the laughs and jokes throughout, and if he wasn't in it, I think the film would have fallen flat on its face or just been summed up as a bit boring. Another character who gets some good lines is Cabal whose outfit is spot on to the video game, and with his history with Kano, they do have some funny banter. I actually just wanted more screen time with them together. I found it a strange choice the writers chose to have these warriors unlock their powers through their emotions, and in some cases killing another warrior who was chosen to take part in Mortal Kombat. It didn't feel like these characters had trained to the best of their abilities to achieve the next level in mastering their martial art. It felt more like a superhero plotline as they discover their powers through their emotions and so forth, which isn't a major problem, but just an odd way to go in that direction. Once Cole unlocks his powers, he has this body armour that absorbs energy, very much like Black Panther. To be honest, Cole just looked like he was covered in Ferrero Rocher wrappers. Ferrero Rocher, a sign of good taste. They throw in Goro, the most iconic boss character from the game, who sadly gets little build up, and when he eventually jumps into action fighting Cole, he appeared underpowered, and this battle takes place outside a barn, a very bland choice of location. The design of the fight scene and its setting just lacked a strong vision. It lacked the scale of something epic. You want to utilise Goro in a big way and have this battle with an interesting backdrop to demonstrate this intense fight scene for the third act, but it ends up being a bit underwhelming. The CGI throughout is very good. The use of Reptile worked very well. It didn't look like cheap CGI. It blended well with the live action material. Goro is very well animated and does look like CGI in some cases, but having the nighttime setting hides the drawbacks of computer animation. And for the most part, it wasn't off putting and was a successful representation of the famous villain. What lets the film down is its production design. Outworld just looked like a coal mine or something of that nature. It appeared similar to the Phantom Zone from the TV show Smallville. It looked nothing like how it was depicted in the video game from what I can remember. The 90s movie created a far more threatening world when Liu Kang and Johnny Cage go to rescue Sonya. When it comes to the final battle, we do thankfully see some familiar locations, especially the bridge which to my eyes looked like the classic stage in Mortal Kombat 2. So that was nice to see, but overall it didn't strike much of an impression and felt like a limitation of the film's budget. There are moments in the film where it does look stunning, demonstrating really good photography in places, but there are moments where it felt like I was watching a Netflix TV series. This may be a result of its budget or its production design. 
it didn't strike home to me that this was a big theatrical movie in some cases. Some of you this may not be a concern at all and this may come across as nitpicking, but if you were to say compare it to the 1995 movie, that felt like something that was designed for the big screen. I'm a big fan of composer Benjamin Wolfish. He has done a variety of great soundtracks, with Shazam being one of my favourite superhero scores in recent years. His Mortal Kombat score sadly left me a bit disappointed. It didn't leave much of an impression, it sounded like music they deploy in trailers in some moments. I was just expecting there will be more themes and just character to the music. It has some nice electronic compositions here and there, but that's not enough to warrant it being a great score. It's not to say it's awful by any means but just from Benjamin's previous work, it felt a bit generic and by the numbers from him. The film does make a nod to the Mortal Kombat theme tune the 90s movie was so well known for by Techno Syndrome, and the film ends with a remix of that track, which is nice fan service, but the remix is pretty weak compared to the classic one, and even the other remixes from the 90s by artists such as the Utah Saints. It may appear I'm coming across a bit negative with my views on the film. Despite my problems with it, it didn't detract from its overall entertainment value. It's certainly worth watching if you love the game, but then also if you are a hardcore fan, some of its creative changes may frustrate you. It's hard to know. And if you haven't played the game or are familiar with its story, you will be a bit lost, so watch it with someone who is familiar with the series. I know there is talks of a number of sequels planned. The film is all about setting up the next movie. I hope the sequel focuses on the other characters to flesh them out and give us a proper epic Mortal Kombat tournament that has all the visual flair and iconography of the video game to really bring Outworld to life. Ha 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 ha! Flawless victory!